And I've got another stand-up comedian from Nova Scotia. And his name is Gavin the Iceman Liddell. Anyone who wants to up see here? There it is. Have fun. Yeah, cool. I'll try. <laughs> hey guys, how's it going? I feel I love this room. It looks like the inside of a pirate ship. So what I'm gonna get to you what the fuck? Ring bolt. So what I'm gonna get you to do is uh, I'm gonna say something nautical and you're gonna give me a real good pirate yar. You up for that? Yeah. Okay. Yar. Ahoy there, Frankerton! Yar! Nice. So, obviously, as you can tell from my ridiculous accent, I'm originally from England. And uh, one of the weirdest things I have living here is I do tend to get my English corrected a lot, which is uh, fucking annoying. I mean, you would never dream of correcting a Frenchman's French, would you? Pardon, monsieur? Who in the bibliothèque? No, 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 Jean Paul. I think you'll find it's pronounced Bible techie. <laughs> yeah, I do tend to get myself in a bit of trouble with this accent. I was at a party in Halifax the other day, and uh, this guy came up to me, complete stranger. Uh, didn't have a clue who he was. Stranger. And, um, and he came up to me and he said, uh, Hey, are you English? And I said, Yes, mate, I'm English. <laughs> and then he said this, he said, Yeah, you kicked the French out of Nova Scotia. <laughs> now, when I get drunk, I do tend to pass out, lose vast tracts of memory, but for the life of me, I can't remember kicking the French out of Nova Scotia. I really can't. I mean, just think about it, it'd be a logistical nightmare, wouldn't it? I'd have to steal a bus and then drive around Nova Scotia, drunk, right? <laughs> Rounding up French people like some sort of modern day Pied Piper. <laughs> but instead of a flute, I'd have an accordion, wouldn't I, eh? Because they fucking love them, do not they, right? <laughs> so I'd be rounding them up, I'd be getting them on the bus, I'd have to drive them all the way down to the border, kick them over the border, go on Frenchy, hop it, right? <laughs> Get back on the bus and drive home. So while all this is going on, the guy, he said it again, he said, yeah, you kicked the French out of Nova Scotia. So I said the only thing that actually came to my mind at the time, which was, you're welcome. <laughs> right? And then he said this. He said, yeah, and you sold submarines to our Navy, which don't even fucking work. <laughs> How fucking drunk was I? <laughs> Not only am I rounding up French people, I'm also holding meetings with the Department of National Defence and selling them submarines I don't even have. <laughs> I mean, it was a rum night, it could have happened. <laughs> Screech. Fuck. Yeah. So if you see me later on, I'm drunk, for fuck's sake, run away. I'm obviously a nightmare. <laughs> right. We all have horror stories of clearing customs, don't we, right? And I'd like to share you mine. Now, I was in the Navy, Royal Navy, and I was actually a Royal Marine Sea King mechanic, right? And uh, funny old thing, one of our Sea Kings broke down. <laughs> <laughs> Surprise. So anyway, the trouble with this was that it actually broke down in Bosnia, right? In 1993, when the war was on. At the time, I was 19. No, 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 19. 19. <laughs> Wasn't actually sure what was going on, do you know what I mean? Yeah, that sort of time. And, uh, yeah, so anyway, obviously I armed myself with a hammer, some duct tape, to fix the sea key. And seeing as there was a war on, I took a rifle and some ammunition. Smart, right? Now, we actually flew into Split Airport, which is in Croatia, uh, on a UN Sea King. And I survived! Yay! Because it had adequate duct tape holding it together. Now, uh, when, I, when we landed in, the helicopter's still turning, and uh, they actually told me I had to clear customs, right? Which I thought was a bit odd, because there was a war going on, and uh, I can't remember the Allied soldiers having to clear customs when they stormed the beaches of Normandy. You know I mean? <laughs> there are your papers! Ah, <laughs> fuck! <laughs> my wife's got my passport, she's in the other landing craft, I can't... <laughs> fuck! Then there is no entry for you! Ah, uh, fuck it. <laughs> George! Do you know what I mean? Ridiculous. 
So anyway, and this is quite new for me, so... Right, anyway, so I jumped out the Sea King and I left my bag, rifle and ammunition on the helicopter. But then they told me, no, wait, you need to take that with you to clear customs, right? Which made perfect sense to me. So I obviously thought they were pulling my leg. So um, what I did then is I, I stepped out the helicopter and they were all like, give me the thumbs up and I'm looking at them going, you fucker, right? So I walk up to the security hut and I was ushered in by two really big burly guys with AK-47s, which is always uh, reassuring. And um, you know how you feel when you're clearing customs normally, and uh, they ask you that question, do you have anything to declare? And you know you haven't, you've got nothing up your ass or anything, but in your head, your head's screaming, I've got crack up my ass, there's a bomb in the bag, do you know what I mean? That one, but <laughs> shut up, brain. So anyway, but could you imagine um, clearing customs with a rifle, 120 rounds of magaz uh, 120 rounds of ammunition in your pocket in a fucking war zone. Yeah, a bit nervous. So uh, I was actually shitting myself because I was thinking, well, if this goes really bad, I'm not going to be able to fight my way out of this. I mean, I'm no John McClane, do you know what I mean? Uh, you think I hear you, motherfucker? <laughs> you know what I mean? Ridiculous. So anyway, I hand over my passport and I put my bag on the metal detector machine and that goes through. And the guy, right, he's looking at my passport and giving me the fucking stink eye like I'm going to cause problems in the former war-torn Yugoslavia. Do you know what I mean? Fucking ridiculous. Anyway, um, and at this time, I realised that I still had my rifle strapped to my chest, so I unclip it and start taking it off. <laughs> never, <laughs> I repeat, never move fast when you're in customs with a rifle um, because it makes people fucking nervous. So, um, basically, they all flinched, and the next minute, I heard AK-47s being cocked behind me. Now, that noise will instantly turn the breakfast you ate that morning into a fast-escaping liquid. <laughs> you basically become the human equivalent to the Mentos and Diet Coke experiment, do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, anyway, there was a lot of shouting, and um, I was actually now, because I had to take my rifle off, I was actually frozen in the same position you know those Green Army men you used to have as a kid, right? You remember the really shitty one that you always used to kill off first? I was frozen in that position, you know that one? <laughs> <laughs> that guy, right? It was fucking terrifying. Anyway, there was shit, there was shouting, some shitting. Um, then it all calmed down, right? And uh, anyway, the customs guy, he grunted, because obviously he couldn't speak my language, and not vice versa. And he said, uh, <clears throat> you need to go through the machine. Now, obviously, at this time, I, I said, in the only way you can, when you speak a different language to someone, I said, don't you think that the rifle and ammunition is going to go off when I walk through the machine that's going to detect rifles and ammunition? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> but he said, <clears throat> which roughly translated means, no, dickhead, walk through the fucking machine. Right? So I uh, obliged. Walk through. We were, we were, who would have fucking thought, right? So anyway, I took off my rifle, slowly, right, and put it through the machine. This machine is meant to detect fucking weapons concealed in things, right? So what I'm thinking to myself is, oh fuck, I hope someone hasn't concealed a hidden knife inside this rifle. <laughs> or over 200 milliliters of a clear liquid, do you know what I mean? Because that's going to be real fucking trouble. Um, so anyway, uh, what the fuck am I doing now? Right, so we uh, the fourth button. So and yeah, so I put the rifle through the machine gun, and then I tried to explain to him again that look, I've got ammunition in my pocket. He goes, dickhead. So I had to go through the machine again. It goes off. I take the fucking magazines of fucking bullets, put them in the machine. What the fuck they think they're going to find in there? I don't know. Bullets probably. But anyway, <laughs> um, so yeah, so. Now, I'm, I'm going through the machine now. I haven't got my rifle, I haven't got my ammunition. I'm feeling fairly confident now. I walk through the machine and he goes, wee wah, wee wah, and for the first time during this whole incident, I went, oh, fuck. And I had that face we all have when we go through, through that machine. When it goes off, it's like, oh, I don't know, I don't know. And you, your brain screaming, I've got a crack up my ass, there's a bomb in the bag. You know I mean? like, fuck. So anyway, he looks at me, I look at him, he rolls his eyes, gets his wand, waves it over my groin, ee -woo, ee -woo, it's my fucking belt, yay! So, uh, he stamped my passport, and I was obviously not deemed a threat to the former Yugoslavia, which is great, <laughs> and off I went my merry way to war, yay! <laughs> I haven't gone through passport control with a rifle again since that incident, and I urge you to not do the same. Um, 
what's been winding me up recently? Oh, fucking Facebook. It's not Facebook itself, I, you know, it's, it's, it's a tool. But um, what winds me up is the, you, you know when you get those things that pop up that people throw on your Facebook page, and it's, uh, I'll give you an example. This child gets beaten by his father every day. Hit the like button and end child cruelty. Yay! No, no, that's not what happens. I mean, if you'd like me now, stood in front of you on one leg for world peace. Yep, yeah, fuck all. I mean, seriously, what are we expecting, eh? <laughs> whoa, 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 stop the war. Why? I'll explain. There's this fat guy who lives on the other side of the world named Gavin. Stood on one leg for world peace, got 10,000 likes on his Facebook page. That's it, no more war. Ah, oh, oh, you're fucking kidding. We just get to a really good bit as well. Oh, I guess we just have to pack up this war, go home, and start beating the kids again. <laughs> Pointless. Um, mm. I had a birthday recently. Thank you. Uh, 21. <laughs> Fuck off. Anyway, yeah, 21. Uh, anyway, so what I really, I really wanted one of those new iPads, but they're so fucking expensive, aren't they? So my wife, bless her, she got me the next best thing. You got it, an etch -a sketch <laughs> Actually, it's not as bad as it sounds. We actually use the etch -a sketch for writing down our shopping list. But the only trouble is, whenever I use it to write down the shopping list, I only seem to be able to buy stairs. <laughs> Hmm. Anyway, um, I'm going to lay some uh, factoid on you yeah, here, right now, because I think you're ready for it. They say that cigarettes are more addictive than crack. <laughs> Wrong. I've never sucked a man off behind a dumpster for a pack of Canadian classics before. <laughs> I haven't. <laughs> Marlboro's. Yeah, there you go. One time in Montreal. I was fucking young, do you know what I mean? I didn't know what I was doing. Pierre, bastard. So, um, anyway, I'm going to leave you with this last one, and it's something that really irritates me, and I'm sure it irritates all you guys as well, and that are the gaps around toilet doors. This has got to fucking stop. I mean, what the fuck are they for, right? You look at any other door in the entire building, no gaps. But, oh, the door you want to take a shit behind has a gap around it, doesn't it? <laughs> fucking convenient. I actually find that the gaps around toilet doors are very much like cleavage, aren't they? Huh? They are, because it doesn't matter who you are, you're always going to have a sneaky peek, aren't you? Alright guys, you've been absolutely awesome. I hope you enjoy your next act, Andrew Ford.